Hi there. I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com, and this is my smart American accent training. I wanted to go live today to offer you a bonus class. So we have a live class every Friday at 12 o'clock Seattle time, three o'clock Eastern time, where I take your questions and we talk about American accent training, American pronunciation, basically anything to help you improve your overall communication in American English. And today it's Sunday. We also have members classes on Sundays. So this morning earlier, we had our members only class. We talked about some various topics and I took members questions. I also answer the members questions that come in throughout the week. So my channel members can ask me something at any time in a comment um, on in a class or um, after the fact and I cover it for them on Sunday. So they don't have to come live, they can watch the replay and get their questions answered right away. Um, so uh, that's one of the perks we have for channel membership, as well as um, we have special videos just for members. So weekly classes and quick answers to your questions. Right now for channel members, we're running the American Sounds Challenge. And so each week I'm releasing a new video looking at the sounds of English. And this goes hand in hand with my American Sounds um, online course, which is now available on speechmodification.com. If you haven't yet checked that out, I recommend it. The first lesson in our sounds challenge is about vowel schwa. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that in this bonus class for you guys to give you a sense of what those lessons are about and what they're like. And I chose vowel schwa for our first uh, American Sounds Challenge lesson because it's the most common sound in English. So of all of the different consonants and vowel sounds, schwa comes up the most. And it's kind of one of the only vowels that we refer to by its name. People might be like, what's schwa? <laughs> schwa is the vowel that sounds like uh. The symbols for it, there's actually two. Um, there's this upside down E symbol and this upside down V symbol. And I call uh, my anchor words for Vowel schwa are either such fun, or I also like the word above, um, because all of these have that uh sound. We do often spell it with letter U, but it can be spelled with any letter of the alphabet because it's often short and unstressed in the unstressed syllables. So, um, vowel schwa. When we look at the word above, if you look it up in the dictionary or if you write it out in the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet, that's what these are. It looks like this. Here's my first schwa sound, my first uh. This one is short and unstressed, uh, above, above. And then my letter O also says schwa, and it's gonna be written this way because the above syllable is the long syllable. It's stressed, so it has a clear vowel. So we do have a clear schwa. It's the same sound in such, fun, above, done, etc., And uh, it sounds like a, uh, it's long. And then my unstressed schwa, letter A says schwa also, it's this symbol here and it's short. So that's the only difference between this one and this one. This one is short, unstressed, and this one is long and stressed. So schwa is a vowel that can be the only vowel in a word, like some or does or fun. It's also in a lot of longer words um, as this short little uh above. I also like looking at the word, for example, banana. So look at that, three letter A's, right? But we only say a, ah, the black cat vowel in that middle syllable, that's the stressed syllable. Banana, banana, I hold that longer and it has a clear vowel. These other two letter A's are just like this one in above. They actually sound like schwa. So banana is not ba na na or ba na na. We don't do the same sound. We actually say ba na na. So two schwas and one clear vowel in that longer word. That's part of why schwa is so common in English and we hear it so much. We also use schwa in connected speech for what I like to call real talk. So what we do as native speakers of English um, is that we don't say words word by word. I'm not 
pronouncing each word with all of its sounds by itself in isolation. When I'm talking in connected speech, there's a lot of linking and reducing going on. So if I'm saying something like, um, let's go to the library. Just now, I was saying it word by word. Let's go to the library. Nobody talks like that, except for maybe you hear that when you're first learning English and they're trying to be very clear, have you help you hear each single word. But a native speaker is gonna say, let's go to the library. Let's go to the library. So there's gonna be a lot of length on library. That's the stressed word. Let's go to the, that's almost the same length as this library, right? This is pretty short. Let's, let's go to the library. Da, 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 da. You can hear how I'm quite fast here. How do we get that speed and that fluency? Let's go to the is linked together and there are some reductions here. So first of all, I don't say let us go to the library. <laughs> we already contract into let's. Let's go to the sounds like these all link together. The T becomes more of a flap, so it's almost more like a D and the U becomes a schwa, sounds like duh. Let's go to the. Here's a schwa, another schwa in the. That's the most common word in English. Another reason schwa is so common. Let's go to the library, go to the. So if I were to rewrite that, go to the. Let's go to the library. You can hear how, that's how I can get fluent. And there's lots of schwas there. There's a schwa, there's a schwa, um, etc. So. Vowel schwa is pretty important for pronunciation of individual words, for fluent speech, and it often has some accent error patterns. People have a tendency to be more tense on it instead of relaxed, uh, more open. The schwa should be uh, the, the tongue is central and lax. Um, and so if I'm saying a word like was or does, I really should be using the schwa these are the same <laughs> as buzz. So your tendency might be to go more to was with more open, ah like, or does, the spelling might affect it, or the ability to do this schwa sound. In our American Sounds Challenge, I talk about the common error patterns, what the sound is, how to make it, um, give you lots and lots of common words and examples, teach you how to practice it, and so, um, that challenge, those challenge videos, as well as our challenge, um, our American Sounds course, walk you through sound by sound. Um, this challenge is only open to channel members. So if you are interested in that perk, you might want to check out clicking the join button and checking out channel membership, seeing what's um, that, that that perk is available as well as what other perks are available to you. Um, if you don't want to be a channel member, we do talk about these topics in our Word of the Day classes and on Fridays, but it's just a way to go a little more in depth, understand what kinds of patterns you might have, and you know, get a jump start on improving your pronunciation overall. So that's the first American Sounds Challenge lesson topic is vowel schwa. The second topic is going to be, um, and that was released last week, this week's topic is the flap T another top um, topic. So flap T, um, I like schwa as an important first step because it's the most common sound in English. Flap T is also very common and it's one of the sounds that has the most American quality to it. So if you're looking to have American pronunciation versus British pronunciation, you're gonna wanna be saying water rather than water. You're gonna be wanna saying it's hot out rather than it's hot out. Um, flap T happens in the middle of words. It happens with linking. So in our sounds challenge video, we talk about what flap T is, how to make it, where to use it. And also I give you additional resources um, from my website and from other videos that you can use to go a little more in depth um, and learn how to do those sounds. So that's the American Sounds Challenge. It's going on right now for our channel members. Um, and you can go to our channel page here and see the members only videos. You can watch our video about membership and see if it's something that's interesting to you. You can also go to
to our website, speechmodification.com. I often show you this in class to show you our free practice and resources and materials because a lot of videos and lessons are there. And I just wanna show you also um, that our courses are now all either free or they're under $2. And so the one I've been talking about here are Sounds of American English course. That one is just $2, covers every sound of English in a systematic way and gives you practice materials and videos, lessons to work through, to determine kind of where um, you need practice, um, to make sense of sounds and spelling, to learn about things like vowel schwa and flap T. And um, so I hope you'll check that out. Um, you can get a uh, free preview of the different various online courses and see what might work for you. We also have our word of the day course on there, which goes along with our daily word of the day videos, which maybe you've been watching. Um, that course has the daily word of the day videos for pronunciation, as well as giving you um, definitions for the words so you can work on vocabulary too. So I see some of you are here live. I'm gonna check in with your comments and questions. Um, as long as we're here live, we might as well take a few of those. So um, thank you for being here with me. Hi, Stella, nice to see you. Um, and Stella, uh, was I saw on Friday you were talking about improving sounding more like a native speaker. And yes, you definitely can do that with work and practice, looking at the sound differences, looking at linking and reductions like we did today. So that's great. Um, uh, we had a question about, also related to linking, about um, working on in the together. I do have a video specifically for this, but this is something I often talk about because it is challenging for people sometimes to go from the N to the TH sound. And that's because if I were to say the word in by itself, my tongue would lift behind my teeth in, I can feel it touching there. But when I'm saying in the, in the, can you see how my tongue is actually not going to that N position? What I have to do there is I have to be ready for the TH. Otherwise in the, in the, it's too hard to say fluently and smoothly. So instead of the tip of my tongue lifting for the in, when I say in the, the tip of my tongue is down really close, either already in the 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 position between my teeth or close so that it can slide in there very easily. And I'm making the in part with further back on my tongue lifting up and blocking the air. So the N sound, I have to fully block the air for it to sound like an N. I can do it with the tip if I'm saying in, if I'm saying in the, I do it with more of the tongue further back, lifting behind the teeth so that I'm ready for the the sound. One way to feel that is to just say the word the, and then put your tongue like you're gonna say the, but say in instead, in the. I can't really do it on the in part, the vowel has to be open, but you get the idea that the linking of those two changes how we say them. This is true for other sounds as well, Ds and Ts, moving in and out of TH, moving in and out of R. Um, so that's something that we also talk about in our American Accent Training six-week course, looking at connected speech reductions, how to kind of have, know about these little pronunciation cheats. There's the way that we speak when we're just saying individual sounds and when we're saying individual words. And there's the way that we speak when we're connecting words together so that we can be fluent and smooth and have that part where some of the words go by really fast and some of the words are more stretched out because they're stressed. Thank you, that's a good question. Um, um, hi, nice to see you. Uh, we have a question about R and L. I'm gonna say, um, check out my, I do have a full playlist for American R um, and I do have um, videos about L as well. And I'll just show you from our online course, Sounds of English, what you can see in terms of getting help for things like R and L, I'll use that to show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into my course. Um, and when I'm in, when I start the course, I'm in the uh, online practice, I can see um, my menu has all of the different sounds here um, and I can scan through to the lessons, but I can also go um, and just search by lesson title. So I'll just put in R, there, actually here it's coming up in one of my searches. So there's my R and there's my L lessons. So let's go to American R uh, and we'll just look at the first lesson, how to make an American R sound. And 
uh, right away I can see, so here's an error that people make on the R and here's the correction. And this is actually what my tongue looks like for the L sound. So just like I was talking about lifting the tongue behind the teeth for the no or the in, in the, that's what I do for the L. If I say low, light, later, I can feel my tongue touches up behind the teeth. And for the R in American English, the tongue lifts more in the middle of the mouth and braces against the inside teeth. So if I'm saying low versus row, the front lifts for the low, low, and the back lifts for the row. You can also get more specifics about the positioning, the videos. Uh, you can see videos about American R versus other R's, British R, etc. Two ways to make the American R. Um, looking at our other R lessons as practice lessons, um, difficult words with R. Um, then when we look at the L sound, we have both the beginning initial L, so L at the start of the words and how that's different from L at the ends of words. Um, what's something that's called syllabic L. We can also see, oh, here there's a lesson specifically on L versus R. So that's an issue that many people struggle with. Also words that have R and L together is very hard. I can't recommend this course enough for um, really any pronunciation um, that you're learning and trying to work on for your American English. It's on speechmodification.com and I have the pricing extremely low on all of my courses right now. Everything is either free or under $2 so that it's just accessible to more people, um, uh, whatever your budget might be. So I hope that will help you and just giving you a little sneak preview of that and using that as a resource to talk about your question. Thank you for that, um, for that question. Um, yes, so um, she says, or he says, I've watched videos, but I'm not able to get that. So really, I think um, kind of figuring out what happens in your native language, what you're currently doing for the R versus the L, doing some listening practice. Um, and then also I do offer one-on-one -on -one training. So sometimes for people watching videos helps to a certain degree. Sometimes they need more specific feedback. You can learn more about training options on speechmodification.com as well. Kind of hard to help you in this context, not knowing exactly what you're struggling with, um, but it's probably has to do with the way the sounds work in your native language and the fact that they're somewhat challenging, especially the R sound um, can be challenging to develop that American R. Um, um, so we have a question about the word mackerel. Um, <laughs> and this viewer is saying that they can do girl, but mackerel is, is difficult. Um, the connection from the R to that dark L. So let's talk about that. Um, and I'm... Um, finding it funny because your um, your YouTube profile picture is a cat and you're asking about mackerel and I'm picturing a cat liking to eat mackerel. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. I like it. So mackerel, mackerel. Um, I think, first of all, there's some weird things that we do here. We can say mackerel, mackerel, but I think we tend to reduce it a little bit in American English and do more like mackerel. Um, so when you're doing girl, you're kind of doing girl, you have like er to all, right? Mac, roll, crawl. Um, it's more like the roll part goes together and it's right from that K. Um, you might try doing Mac, er, all, Mac, girl, Mac, girl. Um, and you can maybe use your girl to help you with your mackerel. Because mackerel is really kind of like, like mackerel. <laughs> um, it's just that this is a K, a, a C instead of a, I mean, a K sound, a K sound instead of a G sound. Um, so if you said girl, girl, and then try doing girl, curl, mackerel, mackerel. Um, that would be one way. Um, or if that's tough, then go with the reduction and do the crawl instead. In which case you want to try to try to do all all lifting and then roll roll. 
That's tough. It is hard to go from the R to the L. Roll, crawl, macro. I think knowing that there's a couple different approaches that you can do might help and kind of visualizing, figuring out which one's smoother and easier for you. Um, hopefully that will help you. Good. Okay. I'll take a couple more questions and then I need to sign off for today. I will be back on Friday with our usual live class. Today was just uh, a rainy Sunday here in Seattle and I decided to do this bonus class for you. Having finished my members class, um, I want to you know, encourage you to consider channel membership because um, it's really been wonderful with that smaller group to get to know them and their needs and to kind of talk about more in depth on some topics. It gives us just a little additional opportunity. Sometimes our Friday classes get pretty crowded and I can't get to everyone's questions. Um, and I know when you come to class, I'd really like to be able to answer what you're asking about. Um, so, you know, that's another way to consider um, spreading out the, um, the getting, for sure, getting your questions answered and not having to wait so long. Um, great. Okay. Um, and um, a question about feeling more confident because of tackling pronunciation. So I think... Um, it is challenging when we have pronunciation difficulties or accent difficulties, and we know that, then we don't feel as confident, and then we get kind of in a negative feedback loop of, oh, they're not going to understand me. We start overthinking. When we're nervous, we don't pronounce things as well. So trying to, first of all, practice something kind of on your own so that you feel like, yeah, I've got that. I'm going to you know, feel a little more confident when you're speaking. Usually for most people that I work with, if they're working on it, practicing working with me one-on-one -on -one or doing an online course, they are able to feel more confident moving forward because they understand what's wrong. They know where they are in the progress of changing their speech. It takes time, um, but they tend to have more positive um, interactions and fewer times when people are asking them to repeat, you know, fewer trouble, fewer problems with pronunciation, then that helps them build their confidence. Um, also, recording yourself, practicing, listening to the recordings, listening for what's going wrong so that you get a little bit more um, ability to hear what's happening as you're speaking. That tends to be a good strategy. And, um, you know, making yourself, um, giving yourself a lot of opportunities to speak in English, listen to others, and, um, you know, try to be patient with yourself as you're working on accent and speech that, yes, sometimes still people won't understand. Sometimes it's not you, it's them. It's because they don't have a lot of experience with listening to differences. And sometimes um, knowing that you can use other strategies if there's a challenging word for you, you know, try using it give another explanation, just be ready to keep staying engaged in the process of the communication. And that's the most important part. You know, I think personally, um, having an accent shouldn't be a problem, but I know that for a lot of people, they run into issues, discrimination, people having trouble understanding them, and then that does affect their confidence when speaking. And so, um, you know, there's things that you can do to improve. There's also things that you can do to try to go boldly forward and say, hey, you know, I'm working on this, I'm improving, and in the meantime, I'm going to really try to um, do the best that I can with the skills that I have in my communication. Um, yeah, so it is it is challenging, and I um, commend you for working on it, and um, I hope that, that you can build your confidence through, um, through work and practice. Um, okay. Great, so I'm going to sign off for now. Thank you for the questions. I'm sorry if I didn't get to everyone today. I'll try to come back to your questions at another time. I can hopefully see you on Friday in our Friday class, or um, if you're interested, join as a channel member. You can ask your questions at any time and I'll cover those in our members class next Sunday. Um, that class will be at 9.45 Seattle time, 12.45 Eastern time every Sunday um, going forward. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining this um, bonus class. Do check out our courses on speechmodification.com, and channel membership is a great way to get access to those courses as well as to some of the extra perks like our American Sounds Challenge that we've started this last week and are continuing this week. All right, thanks, everyone. Nice to see you today. 
I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com. Remember, if you want to sound like a native speaker, you can do it. Speechmodification.com. Bye, guys. Hope to see you Friday.